I thought that was another fantastic college basketball game, exciting from start to finish. Obviously, Charlie Moore's game-winning shot with, you know, less than one second to go was uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, I thought Virginia Tech played a, a tremendous second half. They shot the ball so well. And I, I thought our guys kind of hung in there. We, we were not playing our best, but we, we were still, you know, uh, in the hunt. And uh, every chance we got, we made a, a big play. And uh, it came down to uh, the last possession, the last shot, just like it has, I think, the last four or five times we played these guys, whether it be, you know, in the Watsco Center at home or on the road here at Castle Coliseum. They, they, Two teams match up very well, and it's a great college basketball game. We're just thrilled to get the win. We have questions now for Coach Elk, who's using the hand raise function. We'll start with Chris Stock, the inside view. Ed, you just take me through like the huddle uh, leading up to the play by Charlie, and then have you you've been around games a lot? Is there a half court shot that you remember uh, um, that stayed before this one in your career? Well, it's very easy to remember the last half-court shot that won the game. It was at Carolina with the score tied, and Jaquan Newton, he banked it in from uh, the opposite side of what Charlie did tonight. His was on the right side. Charlie's on the left. Um, what what else, Chris, did you ask earlier? Uh, the thought inside the huddle uh, well, leading up to that play. Yeah, I, I kept asking the officials about how much time was left. I thought there was going to be like – two and a half, and that we were going to be on the baseline. And then when they told us that it was going to be the uh, uh, just a 1.8, we put uh, Isaiah Wong all the way down the floor so that they'd have to guard him, Jordan Miller all the way down the floor, and left Sam Wardenberg to just screen for Charlie. And we told Cam, we need to hit him on the run, so he's heading toward the basket. And Cam threw a great pass. That's That's something that – doesn't get fully appreciated, but it's not easy because they had a Luma on the ball. You know, Mutz, I think, was on the ball. And a big guy like that can deflect the pass and throw off the timing of the play. But Sam did a great job screening for Charlie. Charlie did a great job of just coming hard to the ball. He caught it, one dribble, banked it in. Now to David Wilson from the Miami Herald. Yeah, it was kind of you – know, like you said, you were expecting from the baseline. You don't usually kind of see that setup. Was that, I guess, I don't remember who got the rebound, but took a couple of dribbles. So that was that was not the plan, was it, to, to take no, a actually, set that up from the sideline? I told the, the referee, as soon as we get the, the rebound, we're calling a timeout. And he said, well, I didn't hear anybody call it. I said, well, I told you, you can't hear anything in this arena. Well, I could have been screaming at the top of my lungs with him looking right at me. He still wouldn't have heard me. Because this place is, is uh, to me, uh, this arena and the, the noise level, the student uh, involvement is, is really one of the toughest places to play and one of the most fun places to play because of that enthusiasm and energy that they create. Uh, the just the emotion there after that, obviously we're not there. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a feel of like what the celebration, all that was on the court. Just can you kind of take us through what, what from your perspective, what, what that moment was tell. like? <laughs> but, but, you know, everybody from Virginia Tech was obviously in shock, whereas our guys were absolutely thrilled and ran after Charlie Moore and uh, hugged him, tackled him. I, I, I didn't actually see – the, the scrum, I was busy shaking hands. I've been on the other side of these, and there it's hard. It's a hard game to lose. You play really, really well, and you lose a game. We had one the other day where the ball was in a weird spot again, and we tried to do something that didn't work. Well, today was, was you know, in our favor. Cal Freeman from Canesport. Hi, Coach. Congratulations on the win. Two questions. First, I want to start with your team's defense in the first half. You forced 12 Virginia Tech turnovers, which is over their season average in the first half alone, and then scored 18 points off of it. What was so impressive about the defense in the first half? And then to close the game, you held them without a bucket in the last 224. How much does that say about your team's defense? Well, here's, here's the thing. I haven't looked at the stats yet. Our whole strategy – was to try to force some turnovers because Aluma and Mutz are so good in around the basket. 
and their guards are such good perimeter shooters. So kind of our game plan worked in the first half. And the second half, we're, we're not a great rebounding team, nor are we great at defending the three. And that happens to be uh, a, a major strength of theirs, their ability to stretch the floor and shoot threes with Couture and Elaine and, and Murphy. And even uh, uh, Mutz made a three from the corner, Aluma made a three. So when you have five guys that can stretch the floor and shoot threes, it really challenges our defense. In the last two minutes, we've been in so many of these games already. You know, just, just look at the last games. Syracuse, we won by one. At Duke, we won by two. Uh, at Florida State, we lost by one. Uh, at, at Florida State at home, we, we lost by one. You know, and now we win by uh, three. So our guys have been very, very consistently poised uh, in the last three, four minutes of games. They've been making big play after big play. We have time for two more. We'll go to Luke Cheney and back to Chris Stock. Luke, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Congrats on the win. Can you talk a little bit about how challenging it is to play a team like Virginia Tech that's so good at shooting the three-point shot? Well, as I said, they um, overall – in in the um, the whole schedule, not just conference, but overall, they're shooting like thirty eight percent. I don't know what they shot tonight. It was a lot better than thirty eight percent, especially in the second half. And what that does as a as a coach, you're looking at a team and saying, "Can we make them miss that shot?" And that means stretching your defense out. But we know the moment we do that, they're going inside to Mutz and Aluma. So you got to kind of pick your poison. In the first, first half, we had our job. In the second half, they were on fire. So it's a real challenge. Last question for Coach L. Go back to Chris Stock. Yeah, Coach, I want to get your take on a couple other players. Cam McGusty for him. You know, again, we've seen this about 17 points after the break. What do you think of his performance? And then Jordan Miller gives you 18 points um, and some rebounds. Just what do you think of him tonight as well? Well, Jordan Miller got us off to a great start. He, he did everything extremely well in the first half. We, and in the second half, his defense on Mutz and a couple of defensive rebounds he got were absolutely critical. And then the driving layup, he, he got fouled. He made the layup, missed the free throw, but he had an awesome game. Cam Augusti is a six-year senior playing as consistently well, I think, as anybody in the ACC. He, he can score the ball in many different ways. He's been defending well, rebounding very well. Um, and, and you know, I, I think he we're wearing him out. I, I'd like to give him a little more rest, so probably give him tomorrow off.